Welcome to the 2019 Department of Corrections Reward and Recognition Ceremony. I'd like to welcome everyone, families and friends for coming to share this moment with us. This is one of my favorite times um, before the department because this is a time where we get to celebrate excellence within ourselves. Um, as you can imagine, pulling off this event uh, takes a lot of work from a lot of people. And I'd like to thank Heather Simons for kind of orchestrating all of this with Jen Sprafke, Mark Shelton, John Leobold, Jim Rice, Amy Jacobs, Jody Barrier, Ross Fonsworth, Amber Charbonneau, and of course, uh, Matt D'Agostino for signing the checks for the party. <laughs> um, so first of all, we have some presentations in the back. Uh, we'd like to thank the Vermont Corrections Industries, Victim Services, Crisis Intervention, uh, the Leadership Program, Peer Support and Honor Guard for supplying the information in the back. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank the leaders and the nominators uh, for taking time to recognizing their staff and their peers. Please welcome the Department of Corrections Honor Guard and Assistant Superintendent Scott Dubois, who will play the national anthem. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Honor Guard. While this is a time for celebration and recognition, it's also a time where we've lost our coworkers and friends. At this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence to remember those we have lost.
Thank you. As you can tell, we have a new sheriff in town with Commissioner Touchette, and before I introduce him, you can see that some changes have been made. The national anthem played by a guitar player. For those that don't know, Commissioner Touchette is an avid guitar fan. Didn't see he was a good player, but he's an avid fan. So <laughs> it's fair. It's, it's fair. Um, but I think Commissioner Touchette has done a fabulous job in the six months he's been in his position. Uh, we definitely feel the sense of energy that he brings to the position. Now at this time, I'd like to recognize, have Commissioner Touchette come up for his opening speech. Yes, please sit down. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> So good morning. Good morning. Thank you. That was nice. Wow, what a group here. This is uh, probably the largest rewards and recognition that the department has ever celebrated. Um, and I have a, I'm going to go off script here for just a moment. And I think what's really important here is one of our priorities for the last year has been around recruitment and retention in this department. We recognize how challenging these jobs are and um, it's not always the right fit for people but what's really remarkable to me this year is how many people we have celebrating significant anniversaries within the department i think that tells a lot about the quality of the work that we can do uh, the enjoyment and satisfaction we can get out of it it's really remarkable so i think it's uh, it's certainly worth noteworthy so back on script thank you everybody for being here welcome to the our r and r event we host a special event to celebrate the outstanding talent and contributions of the DOC's extraordinary workforce. To our distinguished guests, Governor Scott, Commissioner Squirrel, Secretary Gobey, Secretary Young, Secretary Gustafson, uh, HR Manager Val Nickel, Candace Morgan, thank you all for being here. It means an awful lot to us. Um, a special thank you to Secretary Gobey, who's actually on vacation today. And as I said to you personally, it means a lot to us that you would take out time out of your vacation to be here with us today to celebrate that. Thank you. To the Department of Corrections, good morning. Today is about you. It's all about you. And what a turnout. Before I continue though, who's in the shop watching it? I think we've got everybody here. No exaggeration, there are a couple thousand years of experience in this room. I'm proud to be your commissioner and stand with you today to share in the gratitude we have for you, for each other, and for the privilege of living in this great state that you have made safer, better, and welcoming. I'm equally humbled to work with all of you, my colleagues in corrections. This department is rich in courage, competence, and compassion. It is your resilience, dedication, and versatility that keeps us moving forward, keeps us listening, learning, and most importantly, doing. Our agency key practices are evident in our operational practices. This is your work and your efforts. We cannot be inclusive without diversity. We cannot be evidence-based without accountability. We cannot strengthen Vermont's families if we don't take care of our own families. As you read the program and look around the room, you see the complexity of all the work that we do and the pride that this department takes in getting it done. To the families here today, my deepest gratitude to you and your family for carrying the load at home as a parent at parent-teacher conferences, soccer games, holidays, nights, weekends. Thank you, family members, for supporting your loved ones. who are supporting the department in an effort to support our communities in turn, and in turn strengthen our own family. We know this level of commitment can take a toll. Don't give up on us. We're working really hard to improve our employee support, our peer support, and other, other strategies to become family, a family-informed department. To those of you have, who have served in the military or maybe missing someone currently serving, these sacrifices are not lost on me. Thank you for your service. As a parent of a son currently serving, my wife and I appreciate the emotional struggle, the tug, the constant tug of feeling pride and terror simultaneously. This is, this is what it means to serve, to protect and have com com compassion. Corrections work can be similar in that you often work beyond the call of duty. Again, that's why it's imperative that we must work together. We're better, smarter, and more strategic when we're inclusive and transparent. I see evidence of this 
I see evidence of this teamwork every day in our facilities and in the field, in probation offices, victim services, business offices, and across the entire department. I'm reminded of the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The people in this room can and do respond in an instant when needed. But make no mistake, we've come a long way together. We have a long way to go. And thanks to you, we're going to get there together. Before I make the next introduction, I want to remind you of our schedule. Uh, we are going to enjoy, um, sorry, I lost my page here. Uh, it's stuck together. Thanks, John. Uh, we're going to enjoy, uh, enjoy today's distinguished guests and we'll be, uh, be announcing the medal recipients uh, because I know corrections folks, we're going to do a couple of merit uh, uh, awards and then we'll take a break for lunch. We want you all to be happy and satisfied. Uh, one more thing, uh, please remember to thank those who are covering for you today so that you can be here without distraction to, to congratulate each other, to catch up with old friends and meet new colleagues. This work uh, can't be done without those connections. So thank you for being here once again. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Secretary Al Gobey, who uh, is just an incredible leader for the agency and, and is really inclusive of bringing our departments together and working with uh, trying to bring the same client base together in a way that is meaningful and productive and brings value to our communities and to those that we serve. It's been a real honor to uh, work with you, sir. So I. Secretary Gobey, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. The guitarist is amazing. We gotta send you some love, my friend. Thank you. So first of all, um, Commissioner Touchet hit on some key points that I wanna hit on again. Um, first, it's really kind of cool. Well, he promoted Commissioner Gustafson to secretary, which is a really nice thing to do. The governor will fill the paperwork out later, but it's, it's really kind of cool that some of the commissioners from AHS are here. Um, I hope you understand that it's uh, that that's not a little thing. It's not just symbolic. It's that everyone's trying to work together. It's hard to work together. It's a big place, but it means a lot to me that you're here. It means a lot to me that Secretary Young is here. And, uh, and also, thank you, Governor, for coming. Um, it's important um, as we recognize all of you. Um, the first thing uh, that I want to talk about is the people in the room that don't actually work for us. And that's to all the family members. And so I'm going to embarrass you self shamelessly and selfishly and ask you to please stand up um, if you're a family member of someone here. And you have to stand up or we will come and find you. This is corrections. So th thank you to all the family members. Please stand up. You deserve this. You've sacrificed so much. And to all the family members that can't be here today, please, as you, when, when you're back at work, tell them that I called all of you out and they should come next year, okay? So to you, thank you. You know, at the Agency of Human Services, we run places that are open 24 seven and that's 365. And to all of you that do that, you just have um, a special place uh, in my heart. I mean, I, I have a history of running restaurants they're tough to run. Thank God they're not 24-7. I mean, it is a tough business. And the family members that support that, um, as I just said, should not go unnoticed. Um, the other thing that I want to sort of impress upon you today is that this is literally one of my favorite days of the year because of this event. The only day that I hold in higher esteem is the day that the legislature leaves. <laughs> and it's, it's great they all came together this week. And so um, for that, we are eternally grateful. Right, right boss? Right. Are we okay with that? Yeah. All right. So, um, so I'm not going to go on for very long here um, because I want to let you hear the governor and I want to give time to your awards. But please take one thing from me, and that is my deep appreciation and my sincere appreciation for all that you do. Your jobs are not easy. What we ask of you is not easy. What you do for your communities is not easy. But we respect it, 
and it should be respected. And so know how I feel about you. It's very important to me that you know that. And so um, I'll close with that. And now on to introducing my boss. I, uh, I think politicians are typically defined by how they speak. And uh, Governor Scott, in my mind, is really defined by how well he listens. And I think if you can kind of get the essence of the person uh, from reading Digger or the news, uh, you'll find out that he's a very nice man. But being able to listen to different points of view is important. And when it comes to corrections, it's really important that the governor understands the enormity of what you do. And I will tell you that his ability to hear me and listen to Commissioner Touchette is just unparalleled. And so he's a big supporter, and so I'd like to ask him to come up here and, and talk with you today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Secretary Gobey, and, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Touchette, uh, as well. You've done a remarkable job in the six months here. I'm very impressed, as well as with all of you. I think this is the third year I've had the opportunity to join you in recognizing the hard work that you do each and every day. Uh, but not only that, uh, I like to come to this event. I, I look forward to this event today because not only do we get to, to recognize and celebrate the unsung heroes uh, today, um, this is probably only the second day that I've ever seen Dave Bellini in long pants. <laughs> so that's a big day. And to prove it, I hope we have our picture taken together so <laughs> I can see that. You know, serving as, uh, as governor over the last three years, I've noticed a common theme across some of the populations we serve. It feels as though the level of complexity and extent of people's needs are more significant than they were just a decade ago. Whether it's the ripple effects of the opioid crisis or increasing mental health challenges, our institutions are having to adapt faster than ever to meet the needs of the populations that we serve. But I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know. You have to live this every day. I know working on the front lines isn't easy. I don't envy what you do. The challenges you face are difficult, and finding new strategies to deal with them every, uh, emerge, uh, as they emerge every day isn't easy. Whether it's an offender uh, dealing with a mental health issue, substance use disorder, or any number of things, I'm sure, I'm sure it can seem near impossible getting to the root of the problem. I also recognize many of the cha changes in your day-to-day uh, -day jobs comes from uh, the legislative session. And you probably feel like more consideration should be given to those on the front line the people doing the work when the laws are passed. Listening to you is important. But I'm impressed with how your work and the way you do things and the way you, you uh, face these challenges uh, doesn't go unnoticed. Sticking to the theme of the day, I understand 70 of you have served in the department um, of 20 years and three, uh, Dave being one, uh, being recognized for 40 years of service. It's truly remarkable when you think about that. And while it might not always feel like it, given what you read in the paper, or God forbid, on social media, um, and by the way, uh, my advice to you is uh, don't take it to heart and, uh, and don't read social media. I mean, that would be the, the, the best advice I can give you because you do a great job for us, and we're lucky, very fortunate to have you. Over the years, Vermont is taking many forward steps when it comes to criminal justice, trying to determine who we're afraid of and who we're just mad at, and rehabilitating those in need to successfully re-enter society. Since 2007, we've reduced the state's prison population by 14%, while not seeing a rise in the recidivism rate. The work you do to keep the public safe, and just as importantly, to keep each other safe requires teamwork and the ability to rely on those around you. I've, uh, over the years in, uh, in, in my life, I've built many successful teams, uh, whether it's in racing or politics or business. 
uh, adhering to what I call uh, the four C's when putting my teams together. So the first C is always character. Does a person have integrity? If not, they don't get much further in my, uh, in my book. The second C is competence. Does a person have the skills needed to do the job or the ability and willingness to learn? The third C is commitment. Do they share my vision? Are they ready for the tough road ahead? Do they have a good work ethic? And do they care? And the last C is, is chemistry. And it's very difficult to define. Sometimes it's just your gut telling you whether they have it or not. But this C is the difference between winning and losing. Is the person able to work well with others? Do they have the right attitude? Are they willing to put the needs of the team ahead of their individual needs and ego? Because you can put all the smartest, most talented, and hardest working people in the world together in one room, or on one baseball field, or in one business, and they won't be successful if there isn't good chemistry between them. As I said uh, before, uh, we're lucky to have such great teams at the department. And as I look around the room, I can see many who have all the qualities of the four C's. So thank you again for your outstanding leadership, service, and the work you do for the state of Vermont. And to properly recognize the teamwork that exists here today, I'm happy to proclaim this week as Correctional Employees Month in Vermont. I'm going to read uh, and sign the proclamation to make it official. Excuse all the whereases. Again, that's the way we speak here in Montpelier. We have to add a whereas to everything we're going to say. So, whereas, one of the primary goals for Vermont is to provide Vermonters with an effective criminal justice system which focuses on quality of life and safety for Vermonters. And whereas, Vermont's dedicated correctional employees are essential to our justice system. And whereas, much is expected from the men and women who supervise offenders in correctional facilities and in the community every day. And without, those daily hard, without whose daily hard work and sacrifices, the justice system could not operate. And whereas, correctional employees are skilled professionals who must act as counselors, communicators, educators, and experts at crisis interventions and must protect our safety while maintaining their professional demeanor, often in a challenging environment. And whereas, correctional employees must possess the intuitive uh, sense to resolve conflict and the support and to support a restorative activities while housing offenders in a humane environment or supervising offenders in the community, often to the risk of their own well-being. And whereas, Vermont is pleased to celebrate Correctional Employees Week and is urging all Vermonters to pay special tribute to these women and men who serve so faithfully. So now, therefore, I, Philip E. Scott, Governor, hereby proclaim May 30th, uh, June 6th as Correctional Employees Week. I think I have a pen here somewhere. Oh, that'll work. Thank you. There you go, it's official. And again, I, uh, I do look forward to this event as well. And you are very much professional. And, uh, and I appreciate all the hard work you do each and every day for us. And, and it goes, uh, it may go, uh, go by unnoticed uh, by most Vermonters. They just take it for granted. Uh, but uh, I can tell you uh, that our leadership team doesn't take it for granted, and uh, we thank you for that. Thank you, Governor Scott. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Lucky me, I am the, uh, the guy that gets to stand between you and lunch. <laughs> But I think you'll understand as I present the, uh, the Preservation of Life Awards. It's, it's my honor to present these awards as the facilities executive to the outstanding men and women of the Vermont Department of Corrections. Um, the commitment and dedication that you all show on a daily basis does not go unnoticed. We've heard a lot of that today, and we really do truly appreciate it. Um, it's the presentation of these awards that truly highlight the extensive training that we go through on a daily basis. Um, 
the events that we train for, thankfully, we don't see on a regular basis, but we're ready for on a regular basis. We're ready at a moment's notice to respond and react. That's what we're here for. Uh, these men and women that I'll, I'll be reading shortly, the names truly highlight who we are and what we do every single day. Thank you. Um, as I read through these, these narratives, I'll then um, announce the names and ask each individual to come up to receive their award and ask if you could all just hold your applause until I've read all the names. Thank you. Um, the first one from, from Southern State Correctional Facility. On January 11, 2019, an inmate climbed to the second tier railing of his assigned housing unit. He sat for a moment, then allowed himself to fall off the railing backwards, landing on his head. Facility staff responding to the medical emergency found the inmate on the floor face down with severe injuries. Stabilizing his neck, staff carefully rolled him onto his back. He was unresponsive and not breathing. CO2 Reynolds began chest compressions. Approximately 57 compressions later, the inmate inhaled deeply and then began taking shallow breaths on his own. The inmate was later transported to Dartmouth-Hitchcock via Dart, where he remained in critical care for the next 12 days before succumbing to his injuries. I'd like to announce Gabrielle Reynolds, Correctional Officer 2, Correctional Officer Lucas Fox, Correctional Facility Supervisor James Elwood, Correctional Officer Jason Smith, Correctional Officer Roy Aldridge, and Correctional Officer Paul Mascow, please come forward. Chindon Regional Correctional Facility. Supervisor Adam Bundy was in the booking unit at the correctional facility when an incapacitated female was brought in. The individual was changing clothes and was taking a long time. Supervisor Bundy attempted to get her to speak, and when he received no response, opened the bathroom door and observed the individual attempting to strangle herself with an article of clothing. Reacting quickly, Bundy intervened and prevented the suicide attempt. This quick response prevented any harm to the person in DOC's care. Correctional Facility Supervisor Adam Bundy. The Northwest State Correctional Facility. On January 6, 2019, Supervisor Jordan Pasha, CO1 Joseph Hardy, CO1 Vino, Nurse Billy Joel Trim and Nurse Cindy McGovern responded to a medical 1025 in G-Pod. Upon their arrival to the unit, they were directed to an unresponsive inmate. Supervisor Pasha quickly gained control of the scene. CO1 Hardy and CO1 Vino began life-saving measures and assisted Nurse McGovern and Nurse Trim with resuscitating the inmate. Supervisor Pasha's outstanding display of leadership during this incident allowed both medical and security staff to quickly assess and treat the unresponsive inmate. The team's quick response to the situation aided with the keeping, keeping the incident under control. Their actions had a clear and direct impact in saving the life of this inmate. Correctional Facility Shift Supervisor Jordan Pasha, Correctional Officer Ronald Vino, Correctional Officer Joseph Hardy.
Southern State Correctional Facility. On September 15, 2018, Supervisor Nappy was working as the perimeter officer at the facility. While conducting a tour, he was alerted to a visitor who appeared to be choking in the parking lot. F Supervisor Nappy began conducting, er, sorry. Supervisor Nappy began performing the Heimlich maneuver and stayed with the woman until facility medical staff and local EMS arrived. Due to Supervisor Nappy's immediate initiation of life-saving intervention, the visitor made a full recovery. Shift Supervisor Bruce Nappy. <laughs> Harford Probation and Parole. On the morning of February 4, 2019, Probation and Parole Officer Jeff Percy received an anonymous call that an offender had been drinking alcohol, making threats of self-harm, and abusing his prescribed medications. Percy and retired probation officer Don Shaw notified local law enforcement and went to the residence to conduct a welfare check. The offender answered the door and was obviously under the influence. After further discussion, it was discovered that the individual was attempting to end his life by injecting large doses of insulin, which would have caused his blood sugar to drop and eventually put him in a coma. The rescue squad was called and the offender was rushed to a local hospital where he was hospitalized for several days. The quick response by staff acting on an anonymous call most likely saved this offender's life. P.O. Don Shaw and P.O. Jeff Percy, I don't believe either are here, but we will present their awards to their manager. Yes. Is Joe Sample here? Maybe you could accept another Anybody from Springfield? Bill, thank you. Bill Soul, District Manager of Hartford Probation and Parole. Northern State Correctional Facility. On April 6, 2019, CO2 Scott Bowman was alerted to an inmate attempting to self-harm. CO2 Bowman responded to the cell and found the inmate suspended by the neck with a, sh a sheet. CO2 Bowman called for assistance and rendered immediate aid. The inmate physically resisted, but Bowman was able to reduce pressure on the neck until CO2 Rolando Dwyer arrived and cut the ligature. A suicide note was found in the cell. Due to their intervention, the inmate suffered no injury. CO2 Scott Bowman, CO2 Rolando Dwyer. Southern State Correctional Facility. On March 8, 2019, an inmate climbed over the railing on the second tier as, as he was refusing to be transported to another facility. The inmate threatened to jump from the railing multiple times and referenced killing himself. As a member of the Vermont Department of Corrections Crisis Intervention Team, Correction Services Specialist Jody Safford was called to the scene. Utilizing her verbal skills, CSS Safford was able to safely gain the inmate's cooperation to step back over the railing and lock into a cell without further incident. Correction Service Specialist Jody Safford. <laughs> Chinden Regional. On July 18, 2018, officers Morales and Little John responded to an inmate choking an F unit. They performed the Heimlich maneuver and abdominal thrust to clear the blockage. 
Correctional Officer Timothy Morales, Correctional Officer Robert Littlejohn. Southern State Correctional Facility. On December 31st, 2018, an inmate tied a television cable around his neck. He then fastened the other end to the second tier railing, climbed over the railing, and readied himself to jump. Seeing this transpire, CO1 William Ayotte ran upstairs and grabbed onto the inmate as he jumped to support the inmate's weight. The cable broke and the inmate crashed to the floor below, shattering his right femur and knocking him unconscious. Ayotte's immediate intervention prevented further injuries to the inmate by limiting the amount of force that struck when he struck the ground with. Correctional Officer 1, William Ayotte. March 18, 2019, CO1 Jared Martel was driving into work for overtime when he observed a severe accident in front of him. A truck hit ice, flipped over a bank. Officer Martel immediately stopped and rendered aid. The female driver was unconscious and CO2 Martel cautiously removed her from the vehicle. The female eventually regained consciousness and the passenger was able to get out on his own. Once CO2 Mar Martel made sure they were all right and the ambulance was on its way, CO2 Martel, in true Martel fashion, told him he had to get to work. Others had arrived by the, on the scene by then and Officer Martel, through his dedicated actions to protect life and render aid, has demonstrated qualities that bring pride to the corrections professional. Jared Martel. Chinden Regional. On July 5th, 2018, CO2 Stephen Fleabaugh was completing a security check on an incapacitated individual due to abnormal silence. CO2 Fleabaugh called for the supervisor to come to booking. Officer Riley looked into the special observation cell and witnessed the person in his shirt with his shirt twisted and tied around his neck. Officer Riley then went into AC lock storage to retrieve the scissors. The CO2 Fleabaugh announced 1033 booking, bring cut down tool. The person had his vitals checked by medical and no injuries were reported. CO1 Taylor Riley, CO2 Stephen Fleabaugh. <laughs> Hartford Probation and Parole. On June 5, 2018, Supervisor Fitz became aware of an offender with a history of drug overdoses who failed to appear for a meeting. He sent probation and parole officers Rooney and Waterbury to her address around the corner from the PNP office for a welfare check. Staff entered an unlocked Justice Center apartment with a Justice Center staff member who was on site. They could hear someone in the bathroom gasping for air. They opened the door to discover the under offender was unresponsive. A 911 call was placed and the office was notified. Supervisor Fitz and PR Drood responded immediately and arrived before the ambulance. Staff observed clear signs of a drug overdose and P.O. Drew administered Narcan, which had immediate effect. A short time later, emergency medical staff took over and transported the offender to the hospital. It was clear thinking and quick actions of these staff that saved the offender's life for the second time in the past two years. Probation and parole officers Terry Rooney, Heather Waterbury, Supervisor David Fitz, and Probation Officer Bill Drew. <laughs> 
Southern State Correctional Facility. On April 26, 2018, an inmate made and utilized a noose in an attempt to hang himself in his cell. While completing security checks, CO2 Rock discovered the inmate and radioed for emergency responders. When Rock entered the cell, the inmate appeared to be almost unconscious. Officer Rock used a cut-down tool to cut the noose away from the sink. As staff began to remove the knotted noose from the inmate's neck, he continued to twist in an attempt to continue to choke himself. CO2 Rock and CO1 Dueling were able to secure the inmate, preventing any further injury. CO2 Harold Rock, CO1 John Dueling. Northern State. On July 6, 2018, an inmate received legal mail. Unbeknownst to the staff, this contained bad news. Approximately 45 minutes later, while conducting security tours, CO2 Dutton observed the inmate in a cell lying against the sink with a ligature tied from his neck to the sink. He appeared unresponsive. CO2 Dutton immediately radioed for assistance. Second later, CO2 Dutton and CFSS Fontaine entered the cell, and CFSS Fontaine was able to cut the tightly fastened ligature from the inmate's neck. Medical arrived and rendered first aid before transport to the hospital. Due to their timely intervention, the inmate made a full recovery. CO2 Tony Dutton, Correctional Facility Supervisor, Chad Fontaine. Chittenden Regional. On September 28, 2018, CO1 Janelle Andrews was working in the Chittenden facility. CO1 Andrews issued an inmate a razor. After a short period of time, another inmate from the unit approached Officer Andrews and stated that the inmate was in the bathroom self-harming with a razor. The officer immediately went to the bathroom and observed the inmate sitting on the toilet with what appeared to be the end of a pair of nail clippers. After taking away the razor and clippers, CO2 Andrews applied pressure to her arm to stop the bleeding. CO1 Janelle Andrews. Superintendent Stone, would you like to accept on behalf? Northwest State. On January 5, 2019, Northwest State Correctional Facility experienced multiple inmates who overdosed on an unknown substance. CO2 Ashley Rule was supervising a general population pod when she was alerted to an inmate in, in distress. She discovered an inmate having a medical emergency and quickly secured the scene, radioed for medical and security response, and then began life-saving measures by clearing his airway, preventing him from suffocating. Supervisor Engels and CO1 Barber immediately responded to the medical emergency. CO2 Barbara began aiding CO2 rule in providing life-saving measures as CFSS Ingalls gained control of the incident. Later it was discovered that this, inmate, that this inmate had ingested an unknown substance causing the overdose. Ultimately, the staff's quick actions and precise response to the incident led to the inmate's life being saved. CFSS Ingalls headed the investigation and identified five additional inmates who had ingested the substance causing the medical emergencies. Facility Supervisor Matthew Ingalls, Correctional Officer 2 Ashley Rule, Correctional Officer Matthew Barber. Probation and parole. On October 12, 2018, correction, community correctional officers Stacy Batillier and State Ryan Sharp pulled into a Cumberland Farms convenience store. A male known to them came running across the parking lot in a frantic state, advising them that he needed help because his friend was overdosing. They went to the location described by the male and found an unresponsive individual not breathing on a bed inside of the room. 
CCO Batilia administered one, then a second four milligram, ah, sorry, four milligram dose of Narcan. The individual remained unresponsive. At this time, CCO's Batilia and Sharp removed the person to the floor to begin CPR. During the move, the individual began to come around, starting to breathe and moan and exhibiting a faint pulse. CCO's Batilia and Sharp's quick and decisive action clearly saved the life of a Vermont citizen. Community Correctional Officer Stacy Batilia and Ryan Sharp. Chinden Regional Correctional Facility, and in the interest of time, I'm combining three incidents into one, but on three separate occasions during chow time, CO2 Andrew McDonald, CO2, CO1 Nicholas Colburn, and CO1 Adessa Rondo Sapina each performed abdominal thrusts, Heimlich maneuver, and clearing the blockages from inmates who were choking at, at those facilities. So Correctional Officer Andrew McDonald, CO1 Nicholas Colburn, Correctional Officer Edisandro Sapina. <laughs> Southern State. On April 20th, 2018, CO1 Christopher Berry responded to a radio transmission for an inmate self harming in Bravo unit. As CO1 Barry entered the inmate cell, he observed the inmate lying on his back with a sheet tied around his neck and the other end fastened to a metal stool in the cell. The inmate's face was extremely red. As CO2 Barry began to loosen the ligature with his hands in an attempt to gain space to allow the inmate to breathe, the inmate began to actively resist and pull away. Despite his resistance, CO1 Barry was able to remove the ligature from the inmate's neck and secure him until he was seen by medical staff. Correctional Officer Christopher Barry. Rutland Probation and Parole. On January 13, 2019, Probation and Parole Officer Jamie Dickey received calls from an offender's mother concerned for her intoxicated daughter. Probation Officer Dickey teamed up with CCOs Tyler Barden and Michael Lebrecht over the phone. They searched extensively and found the offender in a sleeping bag in the bushes at, Michael's, at a Michael's store. It was two degrees out. CCOs Barden and Lebrecht convinced her to go with them to the Rutland Regional Medical Center. She was admitted. In all likelihood, this offender would have frozen to death due to intoxication and the freezing temperatures. PPO, Jamie Dickey, CCO, Tyler Barr, and CCO, Michael Lebrecht. <laughs> that concludes the Preservation of Life Awards. A big round of applause for everybody here. We'll start serving the meals. Um, if you guys need to get up and move around a little bit, that's fine. And uh, the meals will be brought to your seats. Uh, before I start, we're going to, uh, Commissioner Touchat wants to take a quick moment before we start the awards stuff of the year. So thanks again for being here. The energy in the room is just really fantastic. It's great to see everybody smiling and enjoying each other's company. While we have the opportunity, though, I wanted to take an, uh, the moment to introduce uh, Deputy Commissioner. I know most of you haven't seen her, uh, but she will be up here taking pictures. And we're now that the session is over, we're, we're going to be getting around to uh, the field and facilities to do some site visits and meet with each of you. It's been really tough during the session to try and do that. Uh, but while she's here, I would, would like to introduce our Deputy Commissioner, who we're thrilled to have on board. Stand up, Judy, so people can see you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Hankin is uh, Deputy Commissioner Hankin is actually responsible for me now, so that's great. Um, and then, Dave, when, when they go to Burlington, can you dress like that? Every day. Thank you. All right, so good afternoon. Um, I'll be presenting the Staff of the Year Awards, um, and then after that I'll be doing the anniversaries. 
So when I read out the awards, um, the recipients named, and I'll ask that the recipients come up, uh, and while I read the narrative, um, just please hold your applause until, until they're all up. Um, and then I'll have pictures and they sit back down and we'll do the next one. Um, so for manager of the year, uh, Bill Soul. Bill. <laughs> Bill Soul has been with the Vermont Department of Corrections for over 37 years. He was a leader in writing the procedure for field staff to carry Narcan. He has been a huge supporter of the restorative justice programming and consist, uh, programming and consistently has one of the top restorative justice centers in the state. With the closing of Southeast State Correctional Facility, Bill's office absorbed staff and worked uh, with the town of Hartford to fulfill contracts. Bill is well respected by both state's attorneys in his area and is well respected by AHS community partners and the local community leaders. Staff satisfaction among his staff were very high, as evidenced by the few staff grievances and lack of attrition. Thank you, Bill. Supervisor of the Year, Karen Slayton. Karen started out as an administrative assistant with the Department of Corrections. Over the years, she has proven herself an invaluable asset to the Barry Probation and Parole Office and to the mission of the department. She was promoted to probation officer several years ago and is now the senior supervisor at the Barry Probation and Parole Team. Karen is frequently sought out by staff because of her toughness, deep knowledge of DOC operations, and the willingness to do anything to support the team. <laughs> Daniel Williams, Correctional Facility Shift Supervisor, Marble Valley Regional Correctional Facility. <laughs> Daniel is an exceptional knowledge, has exceptional knowledge and is well-respected supervisor at the Marble Valley Regional Correctional Facility. He operates as a facility special response team leader and has smoothly stepped into the stepped in to fill the role of security and operations supervisor on an interim basis. He has worked as a driving factor and to update local procedures and never hesitates to pick up overtime to help the facility. Supervisor Williams has coordinated response teams and responded to South uh, Southern State Correctional Facility as part of his special response team duties. He is always available and provides coaching to staff to promote success. He is professional, detail-oriented, and does not hesitate to advocate for what he believes to be the correct course of action. Daniel is constantly exceptional. <laughs> probation and Parole Officer of the Year, Kathy Aston Borski, Hartford Probation and Parole. <laughs> Kathy has done remarkable work with the Hartford Probation and Parole high risk, high need women offenders. She has built strong professional relationships with the population by giving them hope and to support and address the many complex issues they struggle to overcome. Kathy always remains professional and positive regarding this, the situation. She is a great role model for staff. Kathy attends rock concert uh, tribute. Um, Kathy attends an intensive training on mindfulness and resilience at Krapula in Massachusetts and brought those skills back to the Hartford office to develop multiple awareness activities for staff to utilize in order to deal with the day-to-day -day stresses of their work, which is yoga. We brought yoga to the department. Uh, Correctional Service Specialist of the Year, Kevin Buckley, Northeast Regional Correctional Complex. In addition to his stellar work ethic and attention to detail, Kevin Buckley is the embodiment of the principal, principles of the Vermont Department of Corrections. By focusing on the principle of risk, need, and responsivity, Kevin consistently helps the men on his caseload create release plans that focus on their success and the community's safety. His efforts have earned him the respect of the peers and the credit upon him, the department, and the state of Vermont.
Correctional Service Team Leader of the Year, Alex Oraldi. St. Albans Probation and Parole. The Community Restitution Program in St. Albans is thriving under the direction of Alex. Alex was new to the St. Albans Probation and Parole Office and new to the position when he started in September 2017. A self-motivated, conscious employee, Alex believes in restorative justice. Through marketing, the program agencies in Franklin County have been receptive to contracting with the DOC. A town administrator sent a letter of thanks to the commissioner describing how Alex cold called him, leading to the select board members agreeing to contract with the DOC. The administrator wrote, "What a success for us, and for a success for us and for the team Alex has brought has brought to the town this year." It is a reflection to have had these people working not for us, but with us as a community to make their amends, to make amends and to prove themselves into the community that there can be positive outcomes from the criminal justice system. Alex is a worker among workers. He is a role model not only for the offenders he super raises, but for all who have the privilege to work with him every day. Community Correction Officer of the Year, Matthew Christian, Middlebury Probation and Parole. Matthew has gone above and beyond in the Middlebury Probation and Parole Office in support of staff and performing his day-to-day -day duties. Matthew has also carried a caseload and takes every opportunity to assist probation officers in any way he can. He's established an excellent rapport with many offenders and has used his skills in diffusing situations and assisting offenders during conflicts. Matthew is an outstanding employee that represents our department's core mission. <laughs> Correctional Officer 2 of the Year, Michelle DeBlois. You got it. All right. Northeast Correctional Complex. Michelle does an excellent job helping to reduce the contraband flow into the Northeast Regional Correctional Complex. By monitoring phones and electronic messages, she has stopped tobacco and drugs from coming into the facility. She has a good relationship with the helicopters from other facilities and passes information when needed. She is committed to her job and has come in early to search, uh, to search job sites and stays over uh, to complete searches. She also volunteers to help with overtime and will jump in and help operations when needed. <laughs> Correctional Officer 1 of the Year, Timothy X. <laughs> Marble Valley Correctional Facility. Tim is, is an asset to, the to, to his shift at the Marble Valley Regional Correctional Facility. Tim has become the person that staff go to for guidance and is always looking to learn more and take on new challenges, posts, and tasks. Tim is one that is always looking to build camaraderie with his fellow staff, like getting folks to run in the corporate cop road race. Recently, Tim agreed to become a hearing officer as a CO1 with no hesitation. Administrative Support Services Employee of the Year, Kelly Chamberlain, Business Application Support Specialist, Central Office. Kelly is unable to attend. She is on vacation, so her supervisor, Monica, will be accepting on her behalf. Kelly has been instrumental in the development, preparing, and coordination all aspects of the department's initiative and to roll out the updated 410 directive training. She's worked on the development of the lesson plans to get hearing officers certified and OMS trainers prepared to train at their facilities. Kelly's participated as a due process trainer and to help evaluate the participant skill set. Kelly has had Kelly has Kelly had to quickly uh, come up to speed on learning due process as it pertains to the legal issues, facility logistics, and operations. Given her limited correctional experiences, this was a huge challenge that she skill, skillfully managed. The time and effort Kelly put into this project cannot be overstated. Kelly worked, Kelly's work is appreciated and deserving of this award. Yeah. 
there are two awards for the Administrative Services Employee of the Year. Krista Daniels, Business Application Support Manager. Krista has been an integral in supporting, an integral in supporting facility and field operations. The outstanding work Krista conducts has a direct impact on hundreds of DOC employees. Krista has a straightforward approach, is conscientious to the experts of others, and has a jovial spirit. To put it bluntly, Krista is a great at what she does. She has been a key resource in the department's forward progression in incorporating technology to enhance operations. Support Services Employee of the Year. Karen Holmes, Volunteer Coordinator, Northeast Correctional Complex. While Karen has only been in the department for about a year, she has been, she has been a breath of fresh air to an already well-functioning volunteer and recreation program at the Northeast Correctional Complex. Karen has continued building on the strong community ties established as well as seeking new opportunities for the residents at the facility for both the volunteer and the recreational standpoint. <laughs> Support Services Employee of the Year, Daniel Levesque, a Victim Service Specialist. Danielle has, is a tremendous asset to the DOC. As was demonstrated recently in her interactions with a complex, high profile, high risk sex offender release. Over the course of the process, Danny has facilitated a healing reunion between two direct victims and was able to find creative ways to positively engage the skills of the tra traumatized responding officers. She aided the group in transitioning from obstruction to collaboration, developing distributions of responsibility for victims and community safety between law enforcement and DOC staff. It is her impressive ability to quietly guide processes in the obtrusive and, obtrusive and humble ways that makes Danny so deserving of recognition. So team of the year and public Vermont DOC service recognition week selection, Burlington Probation Parole Office Community Corrections Officers team for the dispatch in Burlington Probation Parole. CCPS Stephen Bushy, CCOs John Robinson, John Hernandez, Mike Millette, Brent Mott, Ed Zuckery, Ryan Scatchard, Travis Vanderen, Morgan Viado, Jared Hodgson, John Teske, and Ruth Goodrich. In 2017, Burlington Probation Parole was tapped to starting up and operating a statewide dispatch monitoring center for all probation and parole offices statewide. On the board, on the broad parameters were laid out, it appeared to be a monumental undertaking. Since then, the Burlington CCO team has displayed great flexibility with the constant modifications to the process. Each officer and their supervisor at the time of the inception, Steve Bushy, have all played an integral part in getting the system up and running. Constant flow of feedback with the office and the probation and parole offices was essential to making it happen. It took a massive amount of coordination, collaboration, and good leadership to steer it in the right direction. The outcome is now a system that is much more user-friendly, continues to improve, especially in the most important areas intended from the start, officer safety. Operationally, the CCO team at Burlington bears an immense responsibility by keeping a watchful eye over every officer conducting field work in the community across the state for 16 plus hours a day, seven days a week, and almost 365 days a year. They stand ready to receive and uh, receive or engage emergent calls from assistance if needed at any moment to any location in the state in order to make sure that our officers make it home each night. Now it's time for the anniversary. So again, I'm just going to read out the, the years of service, and they start reading. There's a whole list of them, as everyone knows. Uh, come up. We'll do one big group photo at the end. Uh, save your applause at the end, and then sit down, and we'll start the next group. So 20-year anniversaries of the Vermont Department of Corrections. Jeffrey Atwood, 
Don Fleury, Gregory Hell, James Grant, Scott Mark Melvin, Gary Newton, Mike Tremblay, Jeff Pagini, Mike McGurl, Richard Beard, Mark Garland, Wade Johnson, Joel Machado, Nicholas Merrill, Cynthia uh, Seckler, Bradley Yuri, Michael Clifton, Teo Young, Brian Fisher, Timothy Goad, David Bollinger, Kelly Megan, Victoria Nadu, Stephen Stanley, Michael Blaze, and Carlos Vareal. See that. Good. And at the end of the ceremony, come up and we'll hand you all your certificates. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. I actually believe that 25 years, I think there's more receiving 25 years. So, 25 years of the Vermont Department of Corrections, we have Robert Arnell III. Scott Cookingham, David Miner, Mark Devins, Michael LaCrosse, Shannon Marcoux, Brenda Murphy, Charles Remick, Mike Sweeney, David Bovat, Al Cormier, Ann Cosgrove, Jason Kennedy, Michael Lyons, Michael Morley, Sharon Nichol, Stephen Russell, Kat Kachuk, Denise Caldwell, Jeff Coro, Everick Danforth, Tina Lucier, Paul Major, Scott Morley, Lisa Trout, Andrea Smith, and Heather Waterbury. Coming up to the 30 year folks, these are the folks that are staying with us and they don't have to. <laughs> so, 30 years of the Department of Corrections, we have Maureen Adams, Greg Meishi, Eddie Van Dyke, Lincoln Barberi, Phil Damone, Deb Lambert, Cynthia Harrington, Jansen Satterley, and John Hernandez. John's 30 years was last year, but he was deployed and we decided to recognize him this year. See, John, is he the commissioner now? He can make us do things like this. Still going, 35 years of service for the department. Fred Fleury, Elizabeth Walker, and Maureen Wells.
I stop there? You got 40 years of service. Dave Bellini and Eddie Earl. And the final one, 45, is mind blowing. Deb Visional. So, Deb, we do have the commissioner, uh, Squirrel, here from the Department of Mental Health. She might want to talk to you before the end of the day. So, that is um, it for the awards and anniversaries. Um, Amy and Amber are going to come up for our raffles that we have. Um, I didn't know we had them either, but apparently we have raffles. And so, one may win something. <laughs> <laughs>